This is Algebra 2, Lesson 50. Yep. On page 217. Hello. Quadratic equations. What is a quadratic equation? Four terms. Four terms. What's the degree of a quadratic equation? Four. Yes. <laughs> Um, probably not much time for a review. Remember, we reviewed in, on Tuesday a little bit. All right, so what's the degree? This is a quadratic. Second degree. So how many possible x-intercepts? Two. Two, that's right. Two, one, or none. Got it? Okay, how do we solve for the x-intercepts for these? Typically, I'm gonna change this to a minus. How do we typically solve for the x-intercepts? Oh, oh, oh. Yep, Lydia. You, um. Mm -hmm. Wait, what do you mean? Like How do we solve for the x-intercepts? What questions do we ask ourselves? What? What multiplies to get something to yes. <coughs> to an Okay, multiplies to get the addition. The that factors two. of y. Factors of c. A x squared plus b x plus c. c. Really, a. it's factors of a times c. But right now, mm -hmm. our a is always monic one. Hey guys, you don't have your textbooks open. That's sort of rude. Page 217. Factors of C. Such that we add them. That looks like an E, doesn't it? C. Such that we add the factors and they equal B. B. All right. However, sometimes you're not going to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. oh. So... If you can, that's the default. But if you cannot, then we do something called completing the square. We complete the square so that we get something that looks like a term squared equals a number. And we can solve for x. So we have to get from here to here. And the method that is used to do that is called completing the square. All right, so how do you do it? All of these have a lead coefficient of 1. So it's going to be a little different than if we have a different... Uh, a, a value for a lead coefficient other than one. All right. I do work this a little different from your textbook because this is going to help you. It, when we get to this form, I'm just going to put it that way. So that's the form that we get to after we complete the square. But this is also called the vertex form of the quadratic. And it literally gives you the vertex of the parabola. It gives you the very bottom, the lowest value on the parabola. So we're gonna go from what looks like a, a standard form of quadratic to the vertex form of the quadratic. <clears throat> then we'll move the four over and we'll solve for x. But your textbook doesn't do that. I do that because I want you to see the vertex form and know that it's gonna be important when we go to, gra to graph these. All right, so example one, x squared plus six x minus four equals zero. Notice I wrote those pretty far apart. 
All right, so I'm gonna end up with a term squared plus or minus some number equals zero. And then we're gonna solve for it. All right, there are no factors of negative four such that I add them and I, the result is positive six. It's not possible. That's when you know you're going to complete the square. When you cannot find factors of C such that you add them and the result is B. So you look at the terms with only the X's in them. I'm gonna move this equals zero over. So you do want it set to zero to begin with, all right? You look at the B value you take half of the B value and you square it. Take half of the B value and square it. Now, in order not to change this equality, I could add a number here and subtract it out there. As long as it's the same value, I don't change the equality. That's what we're gonna do, yes. So the standard form is ax squared plus bx plus c. B always goes with your x to the first power. A always goes with your x squared term. C is always your constant. <clears throat> All right, so take half of the b value and square it. That's what I'm going to add inside the parentheses and subtract outside the parentheses. Okay? So that's three, what's three squared? Nine. Plus nine, I'm gonna subtract nine outside. Mm -hmm. The reason we do that, that is because this becomes a perfect square. What are factors of nine such that we add them and the result is six? Three times three. So I end up with x plus three squared. So, the B term, half of the B term squared is what I add and subtract. But what I put in my binomial squared is just B over two. All right, so the nine here is B over two squared. This value is just B over two. Got it? All right, I combine my nine and my four, that's minus 13 equals zero. <clears throat> we know how to solve this. That's what we've been doing. We move the 13 to the other side through addition. So I have x <coughs> plus three equals 13, x plus three squared, yes ma'am? Negative four and negative nine. Good question, yes ma'am? I decided to isolate this, make it a perfect square. The only way we make it a perfect square is if I take half of it in square, half of the B term in square. So now, x, plus, x squared plus 6x plus 9 becomes x plus 3 squared. Oh. Got it? Because x plus 3 times x plus three equals x squared. The middle term is my outers plus my inners. That's three x and three x. And three times three is nine. So for x squared, for this part of the, of the equation on that side, I have substituted in a binomial squared. I have made this binomial such that it is a perfect square of a binomial. That's why it's called completing the square. We make a binomial that is a perfect square. This stays on the outside. 
So this form right here is called the vertex form. Yes? We're gonna finish solving it. But I want you to see vertex form because this gives me the vertex. The vertex is the opposite of that number and the same. So the vertex for this parabola is negative three, negative 13. Opposite, same, opposite, same. Right? Now we're gonna find the x-intercepts. So I move the 13 over you're with me here? I take the square root of both sides. On the right hand side, it's both plus and minus. So I'm left with x plus three is plus and minus square root of 13. Now I subtract three on both sides. So it's x equals negative three plus minus square root of 13. I would not write this as plus minus square root of 13 minus three. Rational goes first, irrational, and we're getting to imaginary numbers today. <gasps> so exciting, it's exciting. Okay, here are my two x-intercepts. So because I work it this way, I have the vertex, and then I have my x-intercepts, which makes this me able to graph this. So when we get to graphing it, you'll be a step ahead. All right, let's work another one. You with me? I'm with you. Okay, what's the first thing we do? All right, let me write the problem. You do the, six, the, the, uh, the number yes. over, I mean, you, yes. you half it half and it. square it. Half it and square it. All right, so look at example two. When you write it, Micah, it has to be in descending exponential order. So my x squared has to be first, my x has to be next, and my constant equal to zero, okay? So that's how I'm gonna write this next one. It's x squared plus two x. I'm gonna move the five over, right? I'm gonna <coughs> put the zero here. What's my b value? Two. Remember, I'm gonna isolate this. I'm going to add something here. I'm going to subtract the same value on the outside. Got it? <laughs> now, Caroline, we take half of the B value and we square it. One. one. So I'm gonna add one here. I'm going to subtract one. I'm going to replace this term with a binomial squared. You already know factors of one such that we add them and we get two. It's one and one. So it's x plus one squared, but that's exactly what your b over two value is. All right, so adding b over two squared, writing b over two here. Got it? Now I'm combining the terms outside the parentheses that I made, and that's negative six equals zero. I'm gonna move the six to the other side through addition. This is the types of problems we have already been working. Then we take the square root of both sides um, can anybody tell me what the vertex is? Negative, negative one, one, negative six. Correct. Opposite, same. Opposite, same. We don't need to know that today, but it's so good that, we, that we're seeing that now. All right, so I end up with x plus one is plus minus square root of six. That cannot be simplified. I subtract the one on both sides. It's x equals negative one plus minus the square root of six. This is my x-intercepts, my solutions, my zeros. It goes rational number first, then irrational. And today we're gonna get to imaginary. Imaginaries would be third.
Okay. I really feel like you're following me. I think so. All right, so what do we do first? We look at what term? B. And what do we do with B? Divided by 2 and square it. What do we do with that value? Add it inside my parentheses, subtract it outside. And then I end up with a binomial squared. What's my binomial squared? It's x plus or minus the b over 2, right? And then I combine, and that's squared. That term is squared. I combine my terms, my constants outside the parentheses. Okay. I feel like this is the easiest I've ever had it at teaching this concept. I don't, maybe I'm just doing a better doing job. A job. <laughs> Maybe y'all are just with me. Y'all are hanging with me. All right. So this is going to be a good video. So you should like, subscribe, and turn on notifications, by the way. Okay, there we go. I did, yeah. Okay, look at example three. Move over however far you need to, okay? Or here. It does, because they moved it up to the top. It was in the middle. So just come up here. All right, look at example three. I'm going to write it the way it is. But what do I must, what must I do first before I begin completing the square? I have to move all the terms. I want my x squared to be positive. Yeah. So I'm going to move both of these terms to the left, and I end up with x squared minus 5x. Remember, I'm leaving some space for b over 2 squared. I'm going to subtract the 5. I'm leaving some space equals 0. It's plus 5. Thank you. Plus 5. All right, now what do I do? Take half of the negative 5, right, and square it. So it's going to be positive. You square the numerator and square the denominator. So it ends up being plus 25, which is 5 squared, fourths, which is 2 squared. You square both of those terms. You can only do that when terms are multiplied or divided in the parentheses. That's the only time the exponent is distributed to all the terms is when terms are <coughs> multiplied oh, right. or divided. So I'm going to subtract 25 fourths outside. What is going to be my binomial squared? X minus 5 halves. Just the B over 2 value. Got it? Just the B over 2. Negative 5 halves times negative 5 halves gives me the positive 20 5 fourths. Negative 5 halves plus negative 5 halves gives me negative 10 halves, which is the negative 5. All right, now I have to combine these, but I can't until I have a common denominator. Page 219, 219. So I'm going to multiply the 5 by 4 over 4. So that becomes what? 20 fourths minus 25 fourths. See how I got that? I made a common denominator. So 5 becomes 20 fourths because 4 over 4. I multiply 5 times 4 to get 20, and it's like it's 5 over 1, and 1 times 4 is 4. <coughs> now I can combine these terms. So I have x minus 5 halves squared minus 5 fourths equals 0. 
All right, where's my vertex? Oh. Yes. Five halves. Five halves. Negative five fourths. Opposite, same. Got it? All right, I add five fourths to both sides. So I end up with x minus five halves squared equals five fourths. Now I take square root of both sides. So the square root of five fourths is the same thing as the square root of five over the square root of four, which is square root of five over two. That is correct. And it's plus and minus. So I end up with x minus five halves equals plus and minus the square root of five over two. I'm gonna add the five halves. X equals five halves plus minus square root of five over two. I do not combine those terms. Because I they have like denominators but I don't add five and square to five. You could write it as x equals five plus minus the square to five over two, has a common denominator, but leave it this way. I want it this way. I'm not sure which way your answer key does it, but this is my, this is my preferred way.